Hello folks, today we are going to understand how do we represent irrational numbers on a number line. Okay, so before we start, we first uh, understand what is a number line. So in your previous grades, you would have studied that if I have a line, I can, I can represent all the numbers on a number line, right? Let us say this is a line. And we can represent all the numbers known to us on a number line. So far, we have dealt with natural numbers, whole numbers, um, integers, and rational numbers, isn't it? So we will see how do we represent these numbers. So how do you start? You draw a line, and then at any point, let us say this point is point zero, right? And then what you need to do is you just take one unit length let us say one centimeter or half a centimeter as a unit and then graduate this line or divide these lines into equal parts like this like that okay so actually it is done through a ruler and a pencil or a compass right so hence you can draw a straight line then you can mark the point zero and from there both on the right hand side and on the left left hand side you can divide the lines into small small parts such that each part is of same length so hence all these points which i have drawn represent one two three four and so on and so forth right all these points are integers here also it is minus one minus two minus three and so on and so forth isn't it now if i have to represent 0.5 so where would 0.5 be so you know it's very easy 0.5 is nothing but between 0 and 1 exactly at the middle point so this is this might be 0.5 and how do i uh, geometrically do this so for for that what you need to do is you have to take the needle of the compass on any of these points let us say this point and from there you roughly measure more than half the distance between these two points okay and then from here here you draw an arc similarly from this point you draw another arc with the same radius and you repeat the exercise on the bottom side as well and then you connect you know this is called bisecting the line segment right so wherever this dotted line meets the number line let us say this point will be nothing but this is 0 0.5 isn't it now let us say if i have to represent 1 upon 3 1 upon 3 how do i represent so let me draw the number line once again and this time around i'll take a bigger scale so let us say this is my number line and this is 0 and for the convenience sake let us say this is 1 okay and i have to draw 1 by 3 so you know how to do it so you simply draw an inclined line on 0 and then you join whatever the end point is from here to here let us say and you have to you have to draw this o let's say p in such a way that you can divide this line into three parts so let us say you take op as 6 cm why because 6 is a multiple of 3 so op is equal to 6 cm you take then what you do is you mark points like this so that each division is of two units so like that let us say you have in using a scale or a compass you can you can mark two points such that this distance is two this distance is two and this distance is two as well right then what you need to do is and once i will finish the construction then i'll explain how and why we are doing it now let us say this point is a so now you join p a and and from all these points let us say this is p1 and p2 you draw p1 a1 parallel to p a and p2 a2 parallel to p a again so if you see these are nothing but equal parts of equal parts of o a okay divided into three parts so hence this point will be nothing but one upon three this is how you can find out a fraction between two points or let's say between zero and one okay one upon three so basically i divided 
this segment OA, this segment OA into three equal parts using the construction. So the first part is one by three. So automatically, if you see this second part will be two by three. So this part is two by three. This point is two by three. Okay, this is how rational numbers are plot on a number line. Let us now move on how to plot irrational numbers. You know irrational numbers are nothing but numbers of the form of sorry numbers which cannot be expressed in the form of p by q numbers which cannot be expressed in the form of p by q isn't it so let us say i have to represent root 2 root 2 on the number line root 2 is a irrational number this is an irrational number isn't it so how do we represent root 2 on a number line so please note that a number line contains all the real numbers hence it is also called a real line we can represent all the numbers on a real line now it starts with let's say zero all integers anyways we know that they can be very well expressed on a real real line similarly all rational numbers also we just saw in the previous case so this is one two let us say three this is minus one minus two minus three so if you see all the points all the point on the real number line will represent a particular number whether it is rational or irrational we just saw how to find out half 1 by 3 on the number line now in this case we are going to learn how to plot root 2 on the real line obviously it will be very difficult to do with a ruler and a scale even if you know the uh, approximate value of root 2 so hence uh, we use geometry to solve this or to find out where exactly root 2 will be lying on this number line I hope you know that all these numbers are nothing but all these numbers are represented by points on the number line. So let us say root 2. So we will use Pythagoras theorem to find out root 2 on the on the number line. How? So let us say I have to find out root 2. So I will take this one unit here from 0 to 1 and then I will draw a perpendicular on 1 such that let us say this point is O, this point is A and this point is B. We have to make sure that OA is 1 and AB, AB is 1. Okay. Now you join OB. Okay. So what do I know about OB? So basically OB square is equal to OA square plus AB square, isn't it? Why? because of Pythagoras theorem so hence if it is one square sorry this is one hence if it is one if it is one then this is nothing but root of one square plus one square isn't it which is nothing but root of two isn't it so hence we, we say is equal to one square plus one square and by geometry OB is equal to root of two right now you take the needle of the compass and put it on O and take the radius equal to OB and try to draw an arc such that the, the circle, the radius, oh sorry, the arc cuts, cuts the number line at let us say point P. Okay. So since OB is equal to root 2 and uh, we are drawing a circle on an arc with radius OB. So OP also is the radius of the same arc. So this is also root 2. So hence eventually. We are able to locate where root 2 will be on the number line okay once again so you draw a, a segment of one unit draw a perpendicular segment of one unit so that the hypotenuse becomes root 2 and hence if you draw the arc cutting the number line then the point where it meets the arc meets the number line is the irrational number root 2 let us now say we find out we want to find out root 3 where exactly root 3 will lie so again I have to use the Pythagoras theorem. So let us say this is zero. Okay. And you draw, you draw, uh, and we know that these are the points zero, one, two on the number line. We just found out root two. How to find out root two? You draw one unit perpendicular on one, then join these two points and take the arc. So wherever the arc cuts is the root two value. Now this, this length is root two, isn't it? Now let us say we want to we just put another perpendicular over root 2 point and now join 
these two points let us name them so let us say this was a this was b this was p and this was q so clearly if you see op is equal to root 2 we just found out and pq is equal to 1 and this is 90 degrees so oq square will be op square plus pq square isn't it now oq square is equal to op square now op square is nothing but root 2 square plus pq is 1 right so it is nothing but 3 isn't it so what will oq be oq is root of 3 right so if oq is 3 we'll repeat the process and let us say you draw this arc like that okay so this point is root 3 so this is how you can locate any irrational number on the number line we'll take up some more example in the problem solving sessions